Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make tapered tangs. Now the particular knife in this project uh, was an experiment with the handles as well as the tang. The tang came out great, the tapered tang came out great, um, that is, but the handle's not so good, and I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. So really, we're just going to focus on, on the blade and especially the tapered tang. This particular project started out with one of my uh, universal uh, stainless knife blanks, it's AEBL, um, and I can modify the profile uh, however I want it. In this case, I'm just going to make a small drop point. AEBL is a great steel to work with, uh, you know, it machines and grinds easily, it hardens up real nice. You do need a heat treating oven for it. Um, I'm going to bevel this blank like I do all of my blanks on, on a tilt table. I start by uh, scribing uh, two lines onto the edge of the blade uh, called railroad tracks. And I'm going to use those as a visual reference when grinding the bevels. Now I'm not really going to highlight the bevels on this video, but I did want to talk about it a little bit because if you're going to taper the tang, I had to think about whether I wanted to do the bevels first uh, or, or um, taper the tang first. Because I use a jig, in this case a, a tilt table bevel grinding jig, that jig really relies on the flat surface, not only on the blade, but also on the handle in order to really um, hold that knife flat and secure and in order to create a good bevel. So I decided to do the tangs uh, after bevel grinding. Uh, but if you freehand grind, you can certainly uh, taper the tang uh, after grinding. If you use any other type of a jig, you probably also want to do the bevel first. This particular jig, uh, Jason Northgard and I developed a couple of years ago. Um, you can find that on my site, birdknifemaking.com. It's a great jig. Um, it's a great way of creating really nice uniform bevels. So I got the blade beveled. Um, I actually heat treated it. I put a um, electro edged finish on the flat surfaces. And now I'm ready uh, to, to experiment with this uh, tapered tang. I use the same a center line uh, jig that I have in order to mark two lines at the butt end of the blade. And I wanted to give a special uh, shout out to uh, N.W. Gene Knifeworks on YouTube. Uh, he's actually the guy that, that told me how to go about tapering a tang and was really the inspiration behind this little video. So anyway, I've got my two marks on there. That's just going to be my visual guide when I'm going to taper this and I'm just going to do it on the flat platen on the 2x72 grinder. I'm going to start on the 2 inch um, wheel up on top and I'm just going to use the edge of that wheel to grind away or hog away some of the material uh, on the center of that handle. There's nothing fancy here. You're just removing material so that it's going to be easier to grind the flats on both edges. You just have to be careful because you don't want to uh, hit the edge when you're hogging away that center material. Now I'm going to use, um, oh I, I was just pointing, you have to also know where your handle is going to start. I'm just going to use a, um, a handled magnet and I found this on Amazon. So I mount the blank to that. I'm going to put the very butt end of the blank onto the grinder first and then I'm going to start to slowly grind. I'm using a 60 grit and I'm going to adjust the pressure. I mean, if you notice, I put some Daikin Blue on the blade, on the handle, so I could see what areas were being ground. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm watching uh, that center line mark at the butt end of that blade. And I'm also marking, I had, I had uh, put a, a black magic marker mark where my handle would end up towards the top of the blade. So I'm watching both of those marks and I'm just making slight adjustments to the pressure and the angle in which I'm holding uh, that magnet and applying pressure to the blank. You just want to create a nice flat surface. So if, if the bottom of the blank is in contact with that flat platen and you ground all the way up to where your scales or your handles are going to begin, then you should have a nice flat surface. You know, this isn't rocket science. Uh, this is just a very simple way of tapering a tang without the use of a surface grinder. 
I'm just taking my time. I got a little scared because of how close uh, the blade comes uh, to the belt. Um, you can see that I wrapped it with, with painter's tape. I, I don't think that would actually save the, save the blade at all if I did make a mistake. Um, but you do have to be really uh, conscious of where that blade is and, and you could very quickly ruin a blade if you touched it to a coarse grip belt while tapering. But anyway, this is one side done and you can see that I've come right to that mark and now I'm just going to duplicate what I did on the other side. So far so good, I haven't ruined, it, ruined anything. And the second side actually went went faster than the first. I, I guess I got a little bit more comfortable. Um, I was able to apply, you know, a little bit more pressure. So I quickly got uh, not only uh, ground to the uh, to to the mark, marking the width of the uh, tapered tang at the butt end, uh, but also up to the mark where my handles were going to begin. Now, before I go any further, I just wanted to test it. So I took two pieces of, of scale material, of scales, and I held them flat against that, um, that blank. And I looked at both sides and, and they, they mount nicely. So I went on to, um, to mount, the way I mount my handles, I mount one side at a time and then I drill the holes. Because this tang is now tapered, I can't really do that without making um, that handle material horizontal with the flat on the blade rather than the tang. So I just, I'm holding the blade flat against a piece of wood and then I just used another piece of wood and a black magic marker and kind of scribed a horizontal line that is horizontal with the flat of the blade, not the flat of the tang. And that's important because I'm going to now use that as a visual reference and I'm just going to go back to the grinder with a very coarse grit belt and just quickly grind uh, that handle material so that it is flat to this flat surface of the blade if you're following me. And the reason this is important, when I hold that handle material flat on my drill press and use the pre-drilled holes through the, um, the blank as my drill guide, I don't want to end up with elongated drilled holes. I want to end up with drill holes uh, that are at a 90 degrees, at 90 degrees. So anyway, it, it worked. Just, just with that visual line, I, I ground the handle material. Then I, use, I hold that flat against a backing board um, and I'm able to drill my pinholes. Now I profiled the knife like I normally would, uh, cleaned it up. I didn't, I didn't polish because I could see right away that, that these handles were not gonna be polished the way I wanted them to. Uh, these handles were, were cast skulls in resin uh, but I put too much dye in and you can't really visualize the skulls as much as you'd like to, or as much as I'd like to. So I'm going to have to bust these off. But for the purposes of this video, uh, the tapered tang absolutely worked out perfectly. And I really, I'm, I'm really kind of liking the way that that looks and especially the way it feels in your hand because the, the handle is a little bit less weight to it. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't hold the ugly looking scales against me. Um, I'd like to give you an invite to check us out on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. If you're interested in that tilt table bevel grinding jig, uh, you can look at that on my site, uh, bergknifemaking.com. Uh, and if you're interested in knife making, uh, check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making, and that's available on amazon.com. Thank you very much.